these um, visits. The first thing is that it's so clear that broadband is what broadband drives opportunity in greater Minnesota. Every place we went, we heard that broadband isn't a nice thing to have. It is really necessary to have for uh, creating economic opportunity uh, in every part of the state. He heard some just incredible stories, a story about a man in Fergus Falls who was a former commodities broker, lived in the Twin Cities, has relocated his business to just outside of Fergus Falls in the home of his wife's great-grandparents because that's where they wanted to live. And he's able to operate his business in that part of the country, that part of the country, our country, um, because of the access uh, to broadband. We talked to a doctor in Brainerd who is one of the um, very few um, oncologists in the region who literally is driving his car to, out, to park outside the McDonald's so that he has the broadband speed necessary to upload and download medical records um, to, look, uh, to look after his patients. And then the superintendent in Rozo, um, such a great guy, who um, talked about how, yes, they've got great broadband in their schools, but when the buses are taking the kids home, they literally have a hot spot in the bus, and they, there's this one, one bus that goes to a, a trailer park near where the kids live, and they hold up the bus so that the kids can stay on the bus and get their homework done before they go home because they don't have access um, on where they live. These are just a few examples of how broadband drives opportunity in greater Minnesota, and we have to keep pushing at it. Such a strong network of, of um, local providers, um, some of them very small, but many of them really dedicated to Minnesota. And I mean no disrespect to the outstanding <coughs> larger providers um, in the room, um, CenturyLink and Comcast, because you guys do fantastic work as well. Together, I think we have an incredible um, Kind of business infrastructure to achieve what we want to achieve with um, moving broadband border to border and that was really great for me to learn and then the last thing i want to just leave you with is that it was so clear to me that we still have a long way to go we're not there yet the commitment that uh, the governor and the legislature made last year for this 30 uh, 20 million in um, infrastructure grants is a great start, but I hope in this coming legislative session we'll be able to continue this work because this partnership between the private sector and the public sector is, I think, going to be what allows us to accomplish what we want to accomplish. It's very much, I think, like rural electrification was uh, um, back in the 1930s, which is figuring out how to get to that last mile in a way that makes sense for our business community and for our citizens and for everybody. So thank you. I know you're going to have a great day today, and I'm really 